outside, and you know they can worship out there too, but it will uh, be more joyful, I think, and beautiful in here. We missed Ash Wednesday. We missed Ash Wednesday, and you know that's okay. We have been living in a season of Lent for a year now. We really have. So count last year's ashes. No, you probably didn't get them last year either. But um, if you did, count last year's ashes, and they've just been on you for a year now. Remember, remember that you are dust. This is not the cue yet, Will. Remember that you're dust, and to dust you shall return. But I am going to invite us tonight, invite us into a season a season of hope, a season of joy and excitement for the future, getting out of the Lenten season um, in about 40 days. And not that we don't need to remember all that we will talk about for the next few weeks and understand what we'll be saying and hearing and reading, but remember that the reason that we are coming is for Jesus, and we know Jesus is alive. He's alive and with us today. So I invite you to stand together, and I am going to actually read the beginning of the Ash Wednesday service, which invites us into a Lenten season. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became a cu- the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel by our Savior and the needs which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by the self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance and a mass, a mark of our mortal nature. Let us now stand before the Lord, our Maker, and Redeemer. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure remains for those. the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before Treasure remains of those who gladly choose. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Yeah. A reading from the book of Genesis. 
God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this evening is a portion of Psalm 25. Let us read it responsively by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Show me your ways, O Lord. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Our second lesson today is from the first letter of Peter. Christ suffered for sins once for all the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated for our sequence hymn, Jesus Paid It All. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find me in thine all in all. Cause Jesus paid it all, all to heal my hope. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change 
the leper spots I had felt the heart of stone Cause Jesus prayed it all All to him I owe See, had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow And when before the throne I stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Cause Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sing left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow he washed it white as snow he washed it white as snow stand for the gospel. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son the beloved, and with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with, wild, with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Sun is just right there. Hi. Now you can see. Well, y'all probably could see me anyway, but I, I couldn't see you. Um, Lent. What a wonderful time to come and examine who we are, examine ourselves, and stop looking at other people and judging who they are or what they have and, and what they might be doing. We come to Lent to begin a process of repentance and observing our own self, our own self. Now, I have to admit, when I was a, a teenager, I, um, I ran an after-school program, and one of the moms of two of the boys, a lady named Kathy Buck, she and I became friends, and we got to know each other. And a few years later, I became the youth minister at St. John the Divine in Houston, and she became the youth minister at St. Martin's, the big church, the diocesan big church. Um, and we would get together and, and meet and do different things with our youth groups together. And Kathy, I mean, Kathy was quite a bit older than I was and uh, because I was 17 and running a program, and she already had two kids in my program. But um, she had one thing that I really, really admired. One thing that I almost coveted that was hers that I really wanted. And I loved to go to her office. She had probably more than 100 Noah's Arks in her office. All the animals, all the, the figures, figurines, pictures, all different kinds 
of Noah's arks. And all the animals were there, two by two, walking around. And it was just almost a museum of Noah. Um, it was a, uh, just a, a picture-perfect story for me at that time of Noah. Anywhere from cartoon to porcelain figures of Noah, his family, the twin animals, and all kinds of beauty filled the boats that they were in. And I loved the boats, probably the, more than anything, the arcs that were there and assembled. Yeah, and you know, as Episcopalians, we have options of what and how we believe. And this may be a surprise to some of you, but there are a lot of people that don't really believe the story of Noah's Ark. They don't believe that it really existed. And as Episcopalians, we have a choice. Now, Dan and I could probably have a conversation and talk about Noah's Ark and have all different kinds of opinions as to what really went on and what really may have happened and what might not have happened. But I'm not sure that it's the story of the animals coming two by two, and we could all sing the Arky Arky song if we wanted to. We probably all know it. But I'm not sure that that was really the point. I'm not sure that having those um, thoughts about animals on a boat and where they might have all fit in or where they might have all gone and done the necessary things that animals would have had to have done or what they would have eaten. Maybe they ate each other. Who knows? Who knows if the boat was really real? Nobody has found it, although they say they have. But what it gives us, it gives us a message of hope. A message of hope. You know, somehow we are invited by God in our story of life to have hope alongside our deep sufferings and in the floods of our life, the different floods that we all live in, that we've lived in this past week, a flood of cold, a flood of maybe hunger, maybe a flood of no shower. Maybe for the last year we've lived in a flood that we have not been able to quite swim out of. It's this strange reality that is the mystery of the cross, the cross of our pain, God's pain, and the mystery of life are all caught up in one another. Always remember, God holds us during the floods. I want you to remember that. God holds us during the floods of our life. And this is the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. It's the good news of Lent, of Advent, of Epiphany, and especially of Easter, the good news in Jesus we are living a COVID life right now. We're living a frozen life right now. Wilderness type living with no power, no water. And today we find ourselves even reflecting on the promises of God's post flood. What we're going to do tomorrow. And we're gonna have a couple of announcements a little later sharing about what we're going to do tomorrow. How does God connect with humanity in the wake of devastation? What do the promises of God to humanity mean for us now? How do these promises deepen our understanding of Jesus? In the wake of the flood of, that destroyed everything, God's commitment is to life, it's to life. Humanity is once again invited to be fruitful and multiply, filling the earth with life. 
We're all called to use our hearts to increase the presence of life throughout creation. A planet that was filled with raging waters is now filled with the beauty of trees and plants and animals and you, the beauty of you. God giving over of everything to humanity is his sign of trust and reconciliation to the living things of the earth. And this mandate to, fl to flourish is for everyone. It's a mandate given to us that we should go out and continue. We can't hide because of the lack of electricity. We can't hide because of the lack of water. Noah knew back then, maybe, that life was going to begin again. And after COVID, after COVID, life will continue as life is continuing right now, as it did back in biblical days. Life continued after every, every disaster as we enter the days that lead to Easter, consider how God's universal commitment to life is for all people and how that might deepen your understanding of the crucifixion. God said, I established my covenant with you. Never again. Never again what? Never again what? Never again will I destroy the earth flood the world, send a disease, freeze your butts off? Never again what? God said, never again. The covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come is given without end, but given with life. God chooses commitment to all life, life. And, and orders, orders that commitment, commitment to, the, to the whole earth, earth by making the rainbow, rainbow the seal of his, his promise. promise. Many, Many of us, us are asking God right now, right now where, where is that, that rainbow? rainbow? When, when is, is it going to come out? out? When, when is, is everything, everything going, going to end? end? Well, you know, you know in, in life, life in life, the circumstances that we live in don't really end. They just keep changing day to day. The rainbow is his promise that he's coming to give us life everlasting. Life when we can, when you and I can, accept him, accept our God, accept Jesus Christ for who he really was, the Savior, the Son of God, with whom he was very pleased, very pleased. God's commitment to life has no qualifications. No limit is set and no timetable is given. The post-flood world is under God's forever commitment to life. And this, and this must be, and this must, must inform, inform how, how we think about how we live. Do you, Do you trust, trust God's, God's covenant? covenant? What, would what would it mean it for your life to incorporate this vision of God's love and commitment into your actions this Lenten season? Jeff Gentry wrote, a worldview that has space for God's commitment to life means that our, <clears throat> that our creating, our justice seeking, our community building, and our worship practices are set in God's creation. Remember, remember all that Christ has done. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. But in between, in between is life, 
life given to each one of us to do as we choose. But as we follow, follow as Noah did, the commandment to get out, get out of the boat, start over, begin life. I believe that's our commandment to this community to continue to do what we've been doing or maybe begin doing what we say we've been doing for each one of us to open our hearts, open our minds, and to look inward and see if we are giving life back as Christ gave life, life back to us. As we reflect this season of life, of Lent, and on the pouring out of Jesus' suffering for our sins, I want you to remember two things. Remember two things. First, remember everyone suffers through floods and disasters like you do. Everyone does. And second, God holds us during the floods of our life. As I began earlier saying, God holds us through all of this. As we continue to walk, to love, and to live, that's the good news, the good news of Lent that we will worship and celebrate together for the next 40 days. And oh yeah, remember, remember the ark, the ark, the animals, they went out two by two, twosies, I think is the word that they use. That's what God calls us to do, is to go out in pairs, go out in groups, and work together for his glory. Welcome, welcome to a holy Lent a time of looking in as we look out on life around us. Amen. I dream of tongues and fire Resting on your people, I dream of all the miracles to come. I hope to see the coming, the healing of the nations. I long to see the prodigals return. So many hopes and longings in you. When will all the dreams come true? I'm a believer in your kingdom. I am a seeker of the new things. Oh, I am a dreamer of some old dreams. Let them now come. I hope to see you come down or in the mighty heavens and let your glory cover all the earth. See your sons and daughters Come to know and love you. Find a purer passion in the church. These are the things my heart will pursue. When will all the dreams come true? I'm a believer in your kingdom. I am a seeker of the new things. Oh, I am a dreamer of some old dreams. Let them now come. May your church now reach out, so in truth and justice, learning to love the poor and help the weak. When your kingdom's coming, it will touch the broken, place the lonely in a family. So many hopes and longings in you, when will all the dreams come true? And I'm a believer in your kingdom. 
I am a seeker of the new things. Oh, I am a dreamer of some old dreams. Let them now come. I'm a believer in your kingdom. I am a seeker of the new things. I am a dreamer of some old dreams. Let them now come. seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, light from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in one Lord, the giver of life, from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and county, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, especially Matthew Farnham, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
Lord, we pray for the concerns of Tony Locasio, Debbie Poehler, Elvira Salazar, Rosie Salazar, and Cheryl Smith. We ask God's healing grace for all people currently suffering from the effects of the COVID-19 virus, all caring for the sick, all mourning the lives lost to the virus, and all people living in fear, uncertainty, and disruption. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us through all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Anybody want to see, sing, Arky Arky? I was kind of hoping Will was going to sing that for us, but it just didn't happen. Um, I don't know that I've ever preached on Noah's Ark before. That's, uh, that was a new one for me, and uh, I've got to tune it up a little bit tonight, and make it a little bit different and better for tomorrow. Um, but, uh, you know, it's got a message, a message of hope. Um, they hoped they that hope they, they would float. They, they hoped that there would be life after the flood. And we know that getting through COVID, getting through freezing, getting through electrical problems, there is hope afterwards. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, our Lenten program is going to be different this year. Obviously, we can't meet together and get together. But what we're going to do is we're going to send out a devotion on Tuesday around 1 o'clock in an email that will come to you from the church, uh, a, a devotion that has been written by one of the seminarians at our three or four different seminaries. And then on Wednesday at three times, I think I said nine o'clock, one o'clock, and 5.30, I think those are the three times, we'll, do a, we'll have a Zoom. Um, I will do a little uh, morning prayer, evening prayer, uh, afternoon uh, or noonday prayer uh, with that, and then kind of give my um, two cents worth on that devotion for that day. And then if I'm fast enough and can get through it, if we have time and there's not 2,000 people on the Zoom, okay, if there's not two people on, more than two people, no. Um, however many are on the Zoom, we may have some dis time for some discussion if you would like to do that. Um, I've not ever done this. I've not ever done a discussion group on Zoom, but um, if there's probably more than 15 or so, that would be hard to do because everybody would want to talk at once. Um, that's just because that's how we are. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. That'll start this coming week. Um, on Tuesday, you'll get a link or you'll get a, a devotion. On Wednesday, we'll talk about it. Please only join in on one, either the morning, noon, or night. 
um, to give other people a time to get on and uh, to be a part of the, the conversation. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I've got six of them planned and ready to go um, for the six weeks of Lent, and we'll see how that works. Uh, the other announcements are pretty much the, the same. The garden uh, is going to try and meet next Saturday, since we couldn't meet today, um, for a work day. And Needlepoint will meet uh, Thursday. We'll go back to Taco Tuesday this, this Tuesday. We'll have Eucharist Tuesday. And we have a couple of wonderful announcements coming today. That's your cue. Hi, everyone. Father Ralph has asked me to give you an update of, of current news uh, in Habitat for Humanity. And I'm excited to announce that there are two upcoming builds uh, that will both be breaking ground in March and, and efforts will go on concurrently. They will both utilize uh, pier and beam construction. They will both use the same one bedroom design. One is for an elderly gentleman in Stafford and the other one is for a widow in Needville. Church of the Holy Apostles in Katy will take the construction lead on the Stafford project and that project is also being supported by Attack Poverty and because of some great work by Roy Haley and others by a grant from the Diocese of Texas. As for the, the Needville project, uh, Christ Church of Sugarland will take the construction lead and that is a 100% Habitat for Humanity project. Now, we still have to live with the reality of COVID. And what that means is that uh, Habitat uh, volunteers have to wear masks and we have to be socially distanced. So our normal practice of inviting a lot of people to get the job done on Thursdays and on Saturdays is just not possible. So the current plan is that uh, we will be using smaller teams of say six or so experienced volunteers and they will be working several days a week until the projects are completed. So if you think you fit that description, and we pretty well know who you are, I'd like you to come and see me or my wife Chris or talk to Roy Haley and we will plug you in. And what about the unseasoned or less seasoned volunteers. Well, we need your help too. What we're thinking of is that first of all, we need people to pray for us. We need you to pray for the safety of our crews and we need you to pray for the success of our efforts, the construction projects, that these, that, that these go ahead and come to conclusion and that by God's grace, the work is done. And then we also invite you to take a look at something else. This is a virtual gala. It's an online fundraising event for Habitat Humanity. It's coming Thursday, March 4th. We ask that you just go in and take a look at the auction items and see if you want to bid on anything. And if you do, that's great. If you don't, maybe you would care to make a small monetary donation to, uh, to the Habitat for Humanity, uh, the uh, chapter, Fort Bend chapter, Habitat for Humanity. And that would be super. And uh, I'd also like to ask you to remember those uh, currently in need. Where do we go from here with the horrendous weather event that we all faced? This extreme weather event, I think, is going to also lead to an, an extreme need in our local communities. I think that you and I will be called upon to help our neighbors Remediate, remediate broken pipes and to overcome uh, water damage in their homes and a host of other things that we cannot really anticipate, but we know the need will come and we hope that when we are called, when our church is called, that many of you will, will step up to the plate and help us. We also want to remind you that we will eventually be breaking ground on our first uh, family home, family dwelling, in, at Hope Lane, which is a Habitat for Humanity development within North Richmond. It's going to happen either this fall or perhaps in early 2022. And with that, we hope that the restrictions for volunteers will be lifted and we will be able to return to normal practices. 
We also hope that Calvary is able to make a significant financial contribution to the bottom line. This will be another Christ Church uh, uh, construction project. We have been invited by them. We are most eagerly uh, to, to, to help them with this project. So on a proportionate basis, we help to contribute with the donation. To make that happen, we can envision that we might be having our own fundraising event here within Calvary in the months ahead, and we're hoping to make that, that uh, happen with God's uh, grace. So that's the announcement. Again, if you have any more questions, if you just want to get involved in Habitat, please come and see me, see Chris, see Roy Haley, see Father Ralph, but please, you are more than welcome to participate, and we will find a place for you. Thank you. Thank you. Habitat is one of the <laughs> Habitat is one of the many outreach organizations that we work with um, and help to support, and it's a wonderful organization. If you have carpentry skills, we need you. We do, and um, and then we also need everybody to be praying. Dan mentioned uh, other things besides housing. Uh, attack poverty is is praying and working and putting together a program that is going to help meet a lot of these needs um, of broken pipes, of fixing sheetrock, of redoing flooring. And along with that is a great need for food. And we have had an offer from one of our parishioners to start a soup ministry that we are going to try and work into either that program with uh, Attack Poverty or maybe we begin our Laundry of Love program again and take soup over there and feed them on, on certain Tuesdays or whatever day it is that we do Laundry of Love. I've not experienced that ministry yet, but uh, be waiting maybe for a phone call from Anna and Rusek, uh, who is going to head up our soup uh, ministry and get a program going with that. And I think that's a very exciting very exciting program that Anne has come up with. Uh, God has put it on her heart that we help feed those who are hungry in this special time of floods, flooding of disasters. Anything else for the good of the group? Thank you. Any birthdays or anniversaries? Birthdays or anniversaries? Oh, I see a couple looking at each other. No. Okay. One couple. One birthday, maybe. Unless Frank's just too shy to come up. No. Great. Would y'all pray with us, please? Gracious Heavenly Father. We thank you for the opportunity to pray with these three who are celebrating a special day this week. We ask that you would be with them, give them the sense of just joy and excitement as a new year comes and begins, a new year of life that's given only by you. Father, bless Lisa on her birthday. Allow her to continue to grow in her love and support of you, grow in her love and support of her family. And Father, thank you for allowing us to love, grow in love as her family of Calvary. Father, and be with Angela and Harry as they celebrate another year of their marriage. Father, bless their time together. Be with them and continue to put a spark in their eye, just a joy in their heart as they share this life together. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Blessings. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice unto God. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here. Fall apart, you're the one.
guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. And every hour I need you. I want to my righteousness. Your grace is born and grace is found is where you are and where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me and where you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. We miss out your mercy and love at the feet 
God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await Coming glory. Glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let's keep the feast. Nobody's going to hell. <laughs> the 
gifts, gifts of, God of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want to be. Father, we thank you for these gifts that have been given this evening. We ask that you will bless them, use them for the purposes of this parish, that we might continue to serve you in all that we do outside of these walls. We ask that you will bless the families who have given, that you will support them and provide for them the needs that they have with your love in Christ's name. Amen. Would you please stand? Together, let us pray. Which prayer are we doing? I don't remember. Somebody start it for me. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the feedings of spiritual food in the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for asserting us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work that you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Precious cornerstone Sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation. You are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be your holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. Only Son of God, sent from heaven. Hope and mercy, oh, at the cross. You are everything. You're the promise, Jesus, you are all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. 
Let the righteous hands of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe your own to us. Your to face and forever we will worship Jesus you our Lord to us Jesus you our Lord to us go in peace to love and serve the Lord And let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe your own to us. Your own. Jesus, you are all to us. 